Guys, I have some uh, I have some very bad news for you. So for any of you that may have been fans of the King of Boys franchise on Netflix, today when you actually go and search for it in case you want to watch it a second time, it has been uh it's been removed. Now, not to give you a scare, that is just the original movie, but this still poses a problem if you really look at the context of things in terms of the series. That is still on there anyway. But in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the original King of Boys movie and why it was taken down. I'm going to talk to you about the movie itself, and I'm going to explain the two post credit scenes that we see at the end of the series. Hey guys, what is up? This is your favorite dark man back with another video. If you're new to the channel, if you like the content here, please do subscribe or consider it at least um, yeah so i'm pretty sure a lot of you today are asking the question why has king of boys been taken off of netflix as of today september 13th so it really boils down to a contract and the terms that were stipulated within the contract now what happens between netflix and say the makers of a movie if you are going to put it in layman's terms is the makers of the movie will come to an agreement with netflix regarding the licensing and distribution of their product now this could vary in terms of the duration on which the product or the movie or series would be on Netflix so it could be for three years could be for a year it really depends on how the contract was structured and unfortunately yesterday September 12th was the very last day that King of Boys was going to be on the platform I hope at least for this particular contract I really do hope they find an agreement and King of Boys comes back because in the long term I think it may pose a few continuity issues with regards to the series that is on Netflix right now but I'll explain that to you in a bit so I I watched King of Boys, the original movie, yesterday. This is a three hour movie. Now, a lot of you are going to think that, hey, this is not, you know, it might be at the time because a three hour movie is very, very long and you need to have a certain level of dedication to watch that if you are not a Marvel fan or if you actually watch Lord of the Rings, which thank God I have never watched. <laughs> I said that. And this three hour duration might be a problem for some, but I can assure you that this three hours is not just a movie. It's it's a whole experience on its own. In my personal opinion, I found that a lot of it was really due to the pacing and the amount of story they fit. No wasted motion, you know, because even in the slow moments, the story is unfolding. Even in the fast-paced action and drama, which shockingly, you don't see, can't say you don't see too much of it, but you see just enough to tell the story. I really liked how they tackled politics and not just in a Nigerian sense, but if you really look at it in more of an African sense as well, uh, how they looked at things like religion how they looked at things uh with corruption I should have <laughs> why did I say that and overall just the human qualities of patience and loyalty this is one of the hidden messages with this movie that a lot of people may not have really caught but when you really look at it it really it, it, it's so good it's so so good and the way everything feels so true to life with this particular movie and the whole series even <sighs> I, I was I was blown away. I couldn't stop watching this thing once I pressed start. And it's good that way because the flow and everything, it's it's perfect. It really is. And we need to talk about this. Sola Sabawali. She oh my god. Oh my goodness. The woman was on fire this whole movie. I, I let me just say this. I don't see how that doesn't win you an Oscar because that was amazing. What I think really worked for her was it seemed like she really immersed herself in this role she was taking. And it made it so hard for you not to emotionally invest yourself in the whole thing. It, it was it was genius. It was genius what she did. Massive props to her. I'll, I'll be honest, right? I really wouldn't be surprised if she actually did whip herself, you know, with uh, the very opening scene of the King of Boys series, the way she does the thing with the whip. I wouldn't be surprised if she was actually doing that to convey that emotion. When she was doing that, it was almost so instantaneous and there's so much you can do with sound design, but I really think she whipped herself and I wouldn't be surprised if she did because top notch i keep saying this and i said this in my big brother niger video you should check that video out i'll leave it right over there for you to go and watch afterwards but the way these people find a way to immerse nigerian culture into their stuff i'm about to get into the deeper side of that but i really enjoyed that i really liked how they infused access bank and guinness very subtly you don't even realize it but you know it's sneaky but very very smart advertising i enjoyed it but i and i'm going to say this right i have never seen more yoruba proverbs or african proverbs snuck into a single piece of content 
ever i've never seen it i was trying to keep track i lost count but i'm pretty sure it went way past 50. it just had to this woman kept giving proverb after proverb after pro i was so I, it gingered i was i was excited i was really excited when i was hearing those things and this might seem a little sinister for some of you but my favorite line in the whole movie from uh solace character of Enola was when she says when the Igbos say the prayer deliver us from evil they're not talking about the devil they are talking about me I'm evil incarnate and then that's like yeah yeah I, I don't know what you did I'm supposed to hate you but girl <laughs> yeah and it's so funny that after she says that she actually goes and is praying at the beach I mean the devil knows his bible so it kind of works here the editing amazing sound design was really a key thing for this this movie it gave it a sense of ambience through the entire production and it's it, they had to pay so much attention to that and it was so well done i really enjoyed that too everything also the color grading the lighting especially they had this weird thing going on it was like it was a balance between teal and gold usually in certain lit situations but that would that was that, that was done pretty well and the camera work to oh i i can't even get technical with this but it was so good i don't know if anyone may have picked this up but in the entirety of the movie i found it so hard to find a static shot a static shot where the camera is just in one place like kind of i'm shooting this video but you see it was always moving at the slightest slight zooms and the camera work was so subtly done at one particular point it was when uh Enola arrives at the airport in the first episode of the series and you can actually see a what looks like a tv camera within the crowd but when you really look at it it's one of the production cameras about to get the next shot when Enola is about to talk to the reporter and that, that was so sneaky but that, that was good i really appreciated what they did it was it was so good also that they composed their own score and they used epidemic sound to produce parts of the score as well was really good i actually caught the epidemic sound thing before i even looked at the credits because there was one particular song in the movie which i actually have used in one of my previous videos i'm also going to link that up if you do hear it then uh, yeah but I, I really enjoyed that they used the music licensing platform to produce the score that that was really good i i really appreciated that but everything else really worked the props and the very lifelike stuff it there's a lot of go in it so you really you know if you have a weak stomach you might not be able to watch this as well but it was so well done as well the consistency with certain injuries of certain characters in particular makanaki oh my god i i loved loved this character i really did although there were some twists that i'm getting to that i you know it kind of jarred me for a second but i enjoyed it too now in all of this there was just one continuity error i spotted with the whole movie but i didn't even ruin it for me that was the thing and it's so hard to do but it's just the nerd in me i think but let me just explain what this continuity error was so in this first movie it's pretty much established that enola's uh, daughter and um, her friend's daughter of kemi is actually about uh, give her maybe four to six years older than Ketan because at the time she was born, at the time she takes custody of Kemi, Ketan is not even born yet. And now you have a situation where at that bedside uh, wedding between the old man that Enola married before he died and inherited all his stuff, Kemi is actually there. Fast forward to the series where at the gravestones of Kemi and Ketan, you see Kemi was born in 1988 and Ketan is born in 1989. So that also raises the question of okay, this is not a legality thing is it to make it more believable that hey there was all this going on but then again it, it's 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 so dicey i mean but it was just one continuity error with the whole thing it's so subtle you might not even notice it but um either way enjoyed it i really didn't mind what i saw honestly but honestly the story is so so good and i actually think that the story doesn't need to end depending on how they play it because i think there's a, there's some story arcs that they still need to resolve like uh dapo is on the run still and we don't know where that's going to lead uh Enola's reign is something i think i'd really want to see and if she does really maintain ties to the underworld with regards to her still being the head of the table i mean it's kind of ironic i have a, <laughs> I have a Enola merch guys well roman reigns would be mad at me if i said that but also this was something funny and this is just the wrestling fan in me talking right so i suspected and i started suspecting midway through 
that probably Roman Reigns might have seen King of Boys and patterned his character on WWE TV currently as the head of the table based on the newest performance because I couldn't help but see so many similarities but then again you look at it and it's like okay this is like a Yoruba Nigerian slight version of the Godfather films very very slight elements pulled from there which is what a lot of Roman Reigns uses for his character now but either way um enjoyed it. I enjoyed it fully. Now, I'm going to talk about the two post credit scenes we see at the end of the series, guys. So, in our very first post credit scene, we see this nurse figure walk into Ari's room to serve him what looks to be medicine, but it's kind of funny because Ari is not actually sick, but he ends up being, you know, poisoned by this lady who turns out to be the katana wielding lady that we saw introduced in, I think it was episode three or four it had to be episode four i guess so yes that first post credit scene does establish the death of Ari the the kitana lady and then the second post credit scene is what does it for people because now everybody's asking who is pregnant and i think it's makanakis on it i think it's makanakis and the setup is there for it too because in the ritual which was being performed for him you do remember that one of the stipulations that gods gave was he was not to bear a child to which he accented to, he agreed to it. And now that, you know, this lady is pregnant, possibly for him, I mean, it's kind of logical, the story writes itself that way. It looks like it's his pregnancy anyway. So that leads me to believe that he is no longer going to be king of boys or co-king of boys at this point. But it's something I really do want to see explored. If if it's something KV Studios really wants to pursue, uh, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I'd want to watch this over and over and over again. But ultimately, I'm really hoping that the King of Boys original movie comes back to Netflix. Because I really think it poses a problem in terms of the continuity when you look at the young Enola character that keeps tormenting the current Enola character. It's like this weird time travel split, split personality thing. It, it's it's weird. But if you didn't know who that was, and if you didn't know who Makanaki was coming into this series, you would have some, you know, there would be some lapses to fill. And I don't know if that works too well in the general context of, um, you know, the story you're trying to tell over here. But either way, well done to, uh, you know, the whole team, that all the actors, man. I was so immersed in this thing the whole way through. Uh, Solat did a lot of good work in this, but it was everyone else, the camera crew, the editors, um, I think it was a sole editor even, and the people who created the score, the, the fellow actors on this project. Uh, great job, great job. I am I'm so overwhelmed. Uh, yeah, that's going to be it. Thanks so much for watching. Please post your comments down below. Let me know what you think or thought of King of Boys um please do consider subscribing to the channel if it interests you that my content is uh, good i guess I don't know, i'm seeing a lot of stuff right now i will see you guys in another video very soon i've been your favorite dark man take care peace